Consuming food produced under adequate hygienic and sanitary conditions is a fundamental practice for safeguarding public health. Proper food handling in this context is essential. Specific procedures are recommended when preparing and handling food. Controlling the temperature of food during preparation is especially important. The correct way to monitor food temperature is by using a thermometer. Food, whether fresh or cooked, should be kept at temperatures outside the danger zone. The danger zone corresponds to the range between 5 and 60 degrees Celsius or 41 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. In this temperature range, the microorganisms that are present in the food can multiply, making food unsafe for consumption. Generally, temperatures below 5 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit prevent bacteria from growing and multiplying. At temperatures between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius, or 140 and 158 degrees Fahrenheit, bacterial reproduction is virtually non-existent or zero. And temperatures above 70 degrees Celsius, or 158 degrees Fahrenheit, promote the elimination of bacteria. The thermometer is the suitable instrument to monitor temperature and to ensure that food is out of the danger zone. Therefore, this is a very important tool for all food handlers. When cooking, many people find that color, texture, or appearance of a food are the parameters that indicate that the food is ready for consumption. However, the color of a food is not a reliable indicator to ensure that it is safe and ready to be served. Failure in temperature control during preparation can make food unsafe and, once consumed, trigger foodborne illnesses. The food handler must use a thermometer at different times during preparation of food. For example, when cooking, reheating, cooling, and thawing. However, it is important to remember that food temperature should also be controlled during storage and transportation. In restaurants, the temperature of the hot and cold food served in buffets should also be monitored to ensure that it remains out of the danger zone. But it is important to remember that time must be controlled along with temperature. In hot or cold food temperature monitoring, digital thermometers with a metallic penetration sensor can be used that provide immediate temperature readings of a food. These thermometers can be shaped like a skewer or a fork, and because their probes can be inserted into the food, they can measure its internal temperature. There is also a type of thermometer designed to stay in the food throughout the cooking process, such as in the case of a chicken or turkey that will be roasted in the oven. There are also laser thermometers that can be used for measuring the surface temperature of a food. Another type of thermometer is the analog thermometer that serves as a reference for the temperature inside a wood, electric, or gas oven. In general, the thermometer probe should be inserted into the thickest part of the food until it reaches the center of the product. The probe should not touch any part of the container or package where the food is placed, or this can interfere with the temperature measurement. When measuring the temperature of meat and fish, the thermometer probe should not touch any bones. In the case of narrower foods, such as chicken breast filet or a steak, the thermometer probe can be inserted through the side of the food. According to the Pan American Health Organization, the recommended temperatures for cooking some food groups are 
fish, 65 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Eggs, beef and beef products including hamburgers and ground beef, 71 degrees Celsius or 159.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Pork, broth, fillings and leftovers for reheating, 74 degrees Celsius or 165.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Chicken and turkey breast, 77 degrees Celsius or 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Whole poultry, thighs and drumsticks, 82 degrees Celsius or 179.6 degrees Fahrenheit. These are the recommended temperatures to destroy the most common microorganisms found in these products that cause foodborne diseases. For food preparation, cooling temperatures may be used. That is, refrigeration at temperatures below 5 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit, or freezing at minus 18 degrees Celsius or at minus 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit or lower temperatures. In addition to temperature and time, some extra care is required when using the thermometer. One of them is sanitizing. The thermometer sensor must be washed and sanitized before and after use, always keeping it clean. The thermometer probe should also be sanitized between temperature measurements of different foods, thus preventing contamination between foods. Another important point is calibration. The thermometer should be calibrated periodically to always allow the correct temperature. An easy way to calibrate a thermometer is to use the freezing point by following these steps. 1. Fill a container with crushed ice and add clean tap water to the top of the ice. 2. Immerse the thermometer stem in this iced water, touching neither the sides nor the bottom of the container. 3. Wait 30 seconds. The thermometer should stabilize at 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, attesting that it is calibrated. Otherwise, contact the manufacturer of the thermometer and be sure to read the thermometer manufacturer's instructions carefully. The results of temperature measurements should always be recorded in spreadsheets designed for that purpose. Record the exact temperature of the food and its date and time. Do not forget to record the calibration data as well. The thermometer is very simple to use and fundamental for food safety. This is the most appropriate way to ensure that the food temperature is out of the danger zone. The correct use of thermometers in the kitchen is linked with two of the five keys to safer food proposed by the World Health Organization. 1. Keep your hands, utensils, and surfaces clean. 2. Separate raw from cooked food. 3. Cook food thoroughly. 4. Keep food at safe temperatures. 5. Use safe water and ingredients. Do you want to learn more about food handling? Visit the Pan American Foot and Mouth Disease Center and Veterinary Public Health website http www.paho.org slash p-a-n-a-f-t-o-s-a